I'll get us started and with the 101 to probably no one's surprise I am going to be taking Brees Hall so Br Brees Hall was <laughs> Brees Hall was uh, kind of in a tier, maybe with a couple other backs before the combine, but he came out and he was in a standalone tier athletically. And he's only 20 years old. He'll be 21 at the day of the draft. Uh, he ran a 4.39 with a BMI over uh, 30, which is a pretty elite score. He crushes explosive metrics. His college production was was incredible. I mean, we're talking two years and nearly 2,000 total yards and 23 touchdowns. Uh, his size and skill set shows and profiles perfect for a three down down back now all we really need to see left for him is some draft capital which at this point you know he was looking back at the second round before the combine he's a lock for the second round now and honestly i i would not be surprised to see him go in the first round he's you know questionably a better prospect than Najee was a year ago and Najee and guys like etienne found their way into the back end of the first round so it'll all be a landing spot but honestly for Brees hall Love everything uh, about the guy. And he might be a top 10 dynasty running back um, if he gets the spot in the draft capital that we want to see out of him. So that being said, we'll move on to the 102, Troy. Who are you taking? Okay. So I don't think it should be to anybody's surprise. I mean, this guy has been very popular recently. At 102, I'm going to be taking... Malik Willis. And the reasons I'm taking Malik Willis is because one, he seems to be the projected first quarterback off the board in terms of fantasy drafts. He's mobile. He has a big arm. He had a solid combine. You know, if everyone saw, you know, that big throw to you know, Calvin Austin and not just that, but everybody loves obviously the Konami code quarterback, you know, in fantasy. So for me, it seems like Malik Willis is going to be that as well as he seems to be projected for the first round or at least late first round. Those seem to be the rumblings. So obviously I want a mobile quarterback. I want someone who's going to get the draft capital who has the ability to start right away. So that's the reason why I'm taking Malik Willis at one Oh two. Love it, love it. So next we got 103. We got Jake. Who are you taking? Yeah, there are a few names on the board that I really like in the 103 here. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. He's still the number one receiver on my board. Um, him, Wilson, and London are kind of all in a tier together for me, but I've got Burks at the top of it. His combine, it wasn't, you know, he didn't run a 4-4 like everybody hoped, but he still, you know, put up solid speed, especially when you consider, you know, how big he is as a receiver. Uh, everybody's talking about his hands not being 4X, you know, there's other sizes than just a cross guys. We got to think about length too. Uh, but the, you know, this is a wide receiver that I think he's, he's still a little raw in terms of some of his um, you know, some of his play style, but I think he can still succeed very, very well at the next level. I think he'll be one of the first wide receivers off the board in the NFL draft, as well as in fantasy drafts. And at one Oh three, it's hard to pass on that. There we go. All right, so Trail on Burks in at the 103. Preston, 104. You got your pick. Your pick of the litter. What are you going with here? Yeah, so I think I'm going to go with Garrett Wilson here. He's my wide receiver, too. Once that RB1, QB1, and wide receiver one are off the board, I'm willing to go and go with Wilson because, you know, first of all, I think he's got the ability to be the first wide receiver off the draft board in the actual NFL draft. He could very well be a top 10 pick, too. And I just kind of like the way he he can move around. He can play in the slot. He can play out wide. But on top of that, he's kind of got a pretty fantasy-friendly toolbox that gives him both a floor and a ceiling because he has that deep threat ability, but he also has that yards after the catch ability. So kind of the culmination of those two re really piqued my interest for fantasy purposes. And he's been earning targets against some great competition his entire college career. I mean, between Chris Olave, JSN, and Jamison Williams, I mean, he's been earning targets against potential top or potential first round draft picks in the NFL. So sign me up for some Garrett Wilson. Okay. Garrett Wilson, 104. We got Levi going next. Levi, 105. Where are we going with this pick? 
I am going with Drake London. I was really hoping one of Hall, Burks, and Wilson would slip, but that didn't happen. So I have London and Jamison Williams kind of lumped in together in my second tiers, high-end wide receivers who are coming off injuries. Uh, I went with London because his ankle injury occurred early in the season, uh, and he recently started running, uh, according to some reports, uh, and he hopes to run at his pro day. So it looks like he's going to be quite a bit further down the road to recovery than Jameson Williams is by the time the season starts, and hopefully he'll be able to participate in uh, camp and everything and be ready to go week one. Uh, Jameson Williams, of course, towards ACL in January and is probably going to miss a significant amount of time this season. So London got the bump for me here. Uh, he checks a lot of boxes with his size, early breakout age, good age-adjusted production, and he has projected draft capital of a mid to late first right now. So I think that all of those things are – things that i like and so i'm going with london here love it love it all right drake london off the board 106 we got duchene's if we're ready to fade this pick where are you going well you know me fade duchene's i'm fading the the noise and isaiah spiller did not run he didn't test well on what was it the broad jump but he was my 104 coming into drafts at this time and Kenneth Walker might have closed the gap, but I'm going to let the NFL tell me what they think about his combine. He showed great production in the SEC at a young age. He never really took off to the next level, but he remained consistent with about 200 touches and 1,200 yards all three years. He's got great size, has shown that he can catch passes. So I'm going to stick with Spiller now, but it's gotten it's gotten really close between the running backs for me here. Okay. Yes, Isaiah Spiller. Uh, how do you feel about him electing to sit out the um, the the forty there? I might, it might have him fall to me at one hundred six here. And I mean, wouldn't it be insane if we saw him at the end of day one like a ceh, and then everyone throws away the Brees Hall decisions, and it's like I don't know Isaiah Spiller landing spot. Yeah, I love chaos. Love <laughs> love a little chaos. So maybe. All right, Dave. Where we where are we going? We got one hundred seven pick is yours really really happy Duchesne's just left this for me on a platter this was just super easy I mean come on guys what what happened the first the beginning of this draft here Kenneth Walker falls right in my lap and at this point in the offseason we don't really know how the NFL is going to value these quarterbacks didn't quite feel comfortable taking a quarterback here maybe once I know draft capital I'll be more interested in taking a corral here or or a, a different quarterback but this is kind of where I this is in the in the first round you let the rest of your draft room make the choice for you and i get the the best of the wide receivers or the running backs here and i want kenneth walker uh i'm usually firmly draft rbs with receiving ability and kenneth walker maxed out with 13 receptions in his best season so I, that's not what i love to see here but everything else is impressive he topped out at 55 percent of michigan state's rush attempts his final season he leads this class and missed tackles force per game breakaway runs per game and he has two double digit touchdown seasons under his belt. And then he comes in the combine, runs a 438 at 211, requisite size. I, you know, I, you, I, I, I'm violating a rule here, but Kenneth Walker, I mean, it, it just feels like I'm happy knowing that he's probably going to get the draft capital with that kind of combine performance. And I'll let the re and running backs gain value early. And I'll just let that do the, the talking for me in the first round of my draft at this point. Yeah. I love it. Uh, all right, next 108, we have Wyatt here. I know a lot of people feel there's kind of a tear break here before we don't know the landing spot on these quarterbacks um, right around this pick. So, Wyatt, where where are you going at 108? So, I don't really like any of the quarterbacks. I only like Willis a little bit for his rushing ability. Uh, I'm really just deciding between Jameson Williams and Chris Olave here. I think if this was a real draft, I'd try to see if anyone wants to come up for this pick and maybe just try and drop back and grab Olave later. But I end up this, I'm going to go with uh, Jamison Williams because I think even with the injury, I'm not too worried about ACLs anymore. Uh, with modern medicine, they're just not so bad for players at this point. And I think he's got a little bit better, like game breaking ability than Chris Olave. And I'm pretty sure he's still going in the first round. He might even go higher than most people will think in the first round because of that taking the top off the defense type of play he has. How worried are you with the with the injury? Where do, where do you think that could affect? We see this with a lot of receivers who don't start maybe at the start of the season. They seem to get a little forgotten about or maybe their uh, their draft capital isn't 
or sorry, their value in the market for Dynasty does isn't quite there with the other receivers when they don't get off to a hot start. Is that worry you at all with Williams here or? No, it doesn't worry me at all. I mean, if other people want to let his value drop in their minds because of the ACL, that's fine. And maybe we can get him at a cheaper price because uh, once he gets back on the field, whenever that is, and he's performing like he does, it's, his value is going to shoot right back up. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, Shane. We are at 109. So we're, we're rounding out the back quarter of the first round. Uh, where are we going here? So at the 109, I'm taking Matt Corral, quarterback out of Mississippi. And this this is bonkers value here. This is a super flex draft. And quarterback is king in super flex. There's only 32 that start. Matt Corral's going to get first round draft capital. Worst case, he gets top 50 draft capital. He came in at the combine over 6'1". 212 pounds above where he was listed and he's run for over 1100 yards in college football the past two seasons so fantasy wise i get the rushing production i get a guy that's going to be you know a, a first round pick at quarterback my my qb1 of this entire class and uh he, he's just gonna as long as he starts he's gonna produce even if he doesn't start, you look at Trey Lance last year. Did he lose any value? He did not. He actually gained some value. Guys like Mac Jones, uh, Davis Mills this past year gained value, not doing that much. Matt Crow can come in and not even be a good quarterback and run, and he's going to increase in value, and I could probably trade him for uh, a mid-2023 first if I want to. I can trade him for a full-on package when you have no quarterbacks because you guys drafted all running backs and receivers. Love it. Yeah, I mean, the, the positional scarcity you have here with quarterbacks and super flex is, uh, you know, undeniable. So getting one that's going to start maybe on day one this late in the first round is you can't beat that. All right. 111. Uh, we got Fod. Uh, where are we going here? Fod. <laughs> ah. All right. So um, my favorite QB in this class since his freshman year is Sam Howell. That's right. Wow. So I have not wavered since that historic freshman year. Great three-year starter, right? And I hear a lot of chatter about, like, the lack of arm strength and all that. I don't really – I don't listen to it. I watch him for three years. He makes every single NFL throw. And as for the efficiency concerns, UNC lost their top two receivers, their top two running backs, most of their offensive line. And he still had a productive year. So with only Josh Downs and uh, Ty Chandler as a check down option, what do we see? We saw his running ability. He went for 800 yards. So we have some rushing upside there. I think he's the most NFL-ready QB prospect in this draft. Now, with that said, we're doing this pre-draft. Draft capital and landing spots going to change everything. I think Sam Howell should be the first quarterback off the board. I don't think he will be, but that's just what I believe. So I'm thrilled to get my favorite quarterback prospect right here. Again, and if everything you're saying is true, a quarterback back here at 110, it is it is a good ROI play. So, uh, you know, you love to see if it works out. Definitely a value pick. Um, let's see. We got Alfred here at the 111. All right, I'm coming up to the podium here. And uh, pretty disappointed seeing the way the draft was unfolding. And then <clears throat> we got two smart guys, Shane Hallam and Todd Foster, going with the two quarterbacks that were looking like they might actually fall to 111. So without, I agree with everything they said. Unfortunately, I now have to choose a non-QB uh, because I think there's a big gap between those and the next uh, tier of quarterback. So I'm going to take the highest upside I still see on the board, and that is going to be George Pickens, uh, if I can actually draft him. Sorry about this. All right, yeah. We're going George Pickens. Um, I just think uh, he, he, te he checked out pretty well with the medicals. Um, he looked good enough in the uh, athletic testing and I really have no worries. He's going to be a second round pick, which is really all I was looking for. Um, he's just got the highest upside. His profile, there are certainly some holes in it. We've got the injury year, et cetera. But if he hits a ceiling, he might be the best or a top two receiver in this entire class. So at this point, I'm just chasing upside and going George Pickens. All right. Love, love that pick. Um, 
Let's see. We got the last pick of the first round here. We got Nate. I'm just sure this will be a surprise to no one who knows you. I feel like I got a good inkling where you're going, but who who is it here to round out the first? At the end of the first year, I'm going with Jahan Dotson. Uh, Dotson's someone I've been campaigning for uh, pretty much all off season ever since I got to see a few of his games. Um, he feels a little bit like a budget Elijah Moore to me, a guy we all fell in love with last year and obviously through his first year uh, in the NFL. Uh, hands look terrific, able to make full extension catches. He's got tons of just circus catches on tape, tremendous body control, climbs the ladder for high balls, fights for 50-50 balls, um, all that stuff that you really want to see. He really wants the ball. You love to see that from your wide receivers. I really like his release package. He gets uh, the cornerbacks on their back foot and then crosses them up. I've seen guys, he's gone up against NFL corners, Sean Wade. He's got lots of reps against Sean Wade in uh, some film that I watched, and Wade tries to press him, and he just breaks him off and cuts away from him and leaves him behind. Uh, really like pretty much everything I see from Dotson. The size, 5'10", 178 pounds is what most people are concerned about. I think we're as... As the NFL trends away from worrying too much about size, I think it's becoming less and less of a concern for people. Uh, it's less of a concern for me than it might have been a few years ago as well. Um, so the hot, uh, Jahan Dodson here, the pick for me at 112. Gotcha. All right. <clears throat> love, love that pick for you. Um, so that, that, that uh, rounds out the first round. 